All right, welcome back to my channel, and today's gonna to be a little bit different format. We're doing a quick hit, or quick fix, if you will. We have a mouse that has started to break down. Notice that every once in a while, if the cord was in a certain position, it wasn't working. So, just to show you that, plug it into the computer. Ah, so you can see that little bit of a uh, red light. Ooh, I got it on. Okay, so the trick to fixing this is to find out where the break in the wire is and to remove that. So there's gonna be three options. It's gonna either be right at where it enters the mouse, in which case we take apart the mouse and re-solder it to the PCB, or it'll be in the middle of the cord where we just cut out the bad section, or it will occur over on the USB side where we might actually want to buy a new USB connector or get a replacement USB cable altogether and re-solder it either to the mouse body or re-solder the removed end on. So the trick here is to figure out where that break is. So you want to immobilize as much of the cable as possible. So that way the parts that you're moving are the parts that are being checked. So right now I have my hand down on this part and I'm going to start working the mouse around. So I've immobilized pretty much all the cord to see if I can get, let's see. Is it here? It does look like it's there. So it looks like it's where the cord comes into the mouse body. So to change this, we're going to go and open up the screws here. So you can see, since this is an older mouse, it usually gets easier to see where those uh, screws are hidden. It's usually under stickers because they'd rather you not do this yourself. So I'm just going to pop that open there, that, and then I believe I've got one here and here. And these are most likely going to be Phillips screws. So we're going to go in with our Phillips head screwdriver. Oh, and at this point you should unplug the USB. This is an old Logitech, but uh, it doesn't really matter what model you have. You should still be able to follow these steps. Just have uh, different places for the screws. Get our magnetic parts tray over here. As you can see, it's already starting to separate the bottom from the body. Gently pop that out. And the nice thing about this is while we're in here, we can take some swab, alcohol swabs and clean any of the mechanisms that have started to gum up over the years. Get a really deep clean. Come back with my alcohol prep pads. Uh, these are nice to have just because they're good on electronics. They're also good for if you do happen to have a scrape or a cut. Works for both. They also have this uh, nice texture to them. So that way you can really work some of the gunk out. You can also use uh, Q-tips. So uh, as we can see now that I've lifted this out of the way, you can see that the USB goes over to this USB header. The nice thing about that is I know that this area of cord should be still good. So I don't need to worry about removing that header. I do have replacement headers, um, but I'm trying to make this quick and easy for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're gonna cut just back here and probably cut back here. So about that much of the cable is gonna get removed. So let's use our wire cutters. 
and you want to cut a little bit more if possible off the cable so that way you know that you definitely got the break so we're doing that and then we're going to move this part up and cut so this is our broken piece of cable don't need that anymore and we're going to strip this back very gently I'm actually going to strip it back farther than I need to just because I like having a little bit extra to work with be careful when you're cutting you don't want to get the there we go cables on the inside of the sleeve in fact one of the things I could do is if I want I could remove all the sleeving since it's going to be inside the body anyways and that will allow me to get more separation between all these and then this is just a piece of reinforcing string don't need that so we can separate these all out you're gonna have five connections stripping these back 26 gauge AWG and then we're gonna do the same process on the other end of the cord Being careful not to get too much of anything else so you can see the, the shielding there okay we're gonna split these apart and this stuff is small enough that I might not have a shrink tubing that is uh, small enough for this but we'll see if you can't get it the first time turn these at like a 45 degree angle do it again should get uh, catch uh, the wire that you're trying to strip and strip it back make sure these are twisted and we're going to warm up our soldering iron all right I did a little bit more cleaning so we're gonna pre-tin all of our connections and with this smaller gauge wire you want to be really quick about your tinning because it can melt the jacket of the wire pretty quickly and we're gonna move over to our magic hands and we're gonna again tin each of these and by tinning these I'm not gonna have to worry about the solder when I'm trying to meld these wires back together and so now I need to see what I have for the heat shrink if I have some small stuff that'll be great because then I can make sure that these are really well insulated if you don't happen to have heat shrink available you can use pieces of tape uh, since this is low voltage that works too or electrical tape so let's grab some of that all right got our heat shrink here we'll see if that works cut it a little bit longer than your connection So that last one I don't need to insulate because it's part of the shielding. So we're going to put all of these on our wires, whichever the longer ones are. Because you need to have a gap between them and the heat that's going to be applied by soldering these together. Or else it's going to activate the shrink of the heat shrink tubing. Let's do the red first, just because we can. All right, so those are touching. And now watch how easy this is to put together. There we go. Make sure that my heat shrink can fit, 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 fit over it. Uh, heat shrink does fit. So now we're going to go black, just because again just because we can bend these other ones out of the way so you can either use a heat gun or as I'm using here 
more lighter. Keep it moving so that way it doesn't melt any of the parts. button this up anyways and see what happens. Okay, so this. This is plastic, make sure you don't overdrive the screws. All right, so as you can see now, the red light has come on. Uh, originally, the computer was having a, a tough time understanding what it was. It was giving me a descriptor failure. And basically all I had to do was go in and find the device in my device manager and basically go use the troubleshooter, tell it, hey, it has a descriptor failure, can you fix it? Windows will go in, take a look at the device, apply the descriptor, that it thinks should go with the device, and you should be good to go. So now that we have this, and we can actually see up on the screen, I'm able to move my mouse. Let's button this thing back up. Uh, obviously, unplugging it before we do so. Make sure that that uh, shielding wire isn't touching the PCBs, uh, just in case there are any exposed traces. You don't want to have it short out. And then we're going to take this, uh, taking care to put the springs back in the way they were found. Make sure that activates properly. And the top shell back on, screw this back together, and if any of these stickers start coming off, that's fine. Um, you can pull them the rest of the way off. If it's this old, the stickers really don't have any of the information they were originally printed with anyways. I'm not concerned about warranty anymore. It's, uh, it's probably 20 years old. All right, and let's just give this one more test here. I'm gonna plug it in. And look at that. We've got a lit. It works. Don't need to go out and spend 20 to all the way up to $60 just for an uh, extra beater mouse. Uh, this is going to be thrown back into my work laptop bag just so that way I have it for um, CAD models. Anyways, thanks so much guys for joining me. I hope this helps you out fixing your mice. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing more of these quick hit videos and if you have any questions leave it in the comments below i love hearing back from you guys have a great day